Welcome to Mary's Kind of Crafty. I'm excited for today's episode. Where's my honey bee? Take one. Here's a list of supplies that we need. These are the tools that we'll be using today. Let's go back to that little place where we used to go in the summer. I start by taking the frame apart. It's a really nice frame that I found at the Dollar Tree. The quality can't be beat for a dollar. We're going to be keeping the cardboard backing and filling in the grommet holes with some lightweight spackling. Um, I'm going to remove the glass. We'll be putting it back in the frame later, but we don't need it for now. I go in with some Dollar Tree black chalk paint and give the cardboard backing one coat and let it dry. I then go in with some white chalk paint from Folk Art and give the frame a really light coat. I'm kind of going for a farmhouse feel, so I don't really want full coverage here. Days, we dip our feet at the water's edge, and everyone would come along to meet us there. I then start taking apart the farm animal sign that I picked up at Dollar General. I want the chicken wire inside. I'm going to paint both sides with the black chalk paint from the Dollar Tree. While everything is drying, I go in and I start weeding my vinyl um, letters. I use my Cricut scraper and my weeding tool to do this. I'm basically pulling off the backing and leaving the letters behind. If you don't have a Cricut, don't worry. You can always use stickers or transfer letters. They work great. The piece of paper there with the grid on it, that's called transfer paper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it over the non-sticky side of my letters. And then I'm going to pull the two apart. So we'll be left with the original backing of the vinyl and then the letters and the transfer paper that are sticky. And we're going to stick those transfer letters onto the cardboard that we had painted, the cardboard backing that we had painted black once it's completely dried. a competition to see who can trap for longer cause every year my body's getting stronger we can swim all day and dance into the night but we're not coming home till the moon once i've completed weeding i go ahead and lay out the letters the way i want them the light shines till the moonlight shines do -do -do -do. Once I've decided my layout, I go ahead and put my words down where I've decided and then remove the transfer tape from the back of the letters. You'll see that while I'm doing it. Here I'm taking some acrylic paint that I picked up at the Dollar Tree in yellow. I'm mixing it with folk art white chalk paint to make it a little bit lighter. Uh, I didn't like how bright the original color was. And I'm just giving it a light first coat. I'm trying to avoid any of the yellow paint bleeding underneath the letters. This does take several coats of the yellow paint to cover um, the way that I like. I apologize for my camera being out of focus and basically you missed the entire process of me creating the honey dipper. The good news is I will be making another one later in this video. As you can see, I'm using my Cricut weeding tool to remove the stickers from the cardboard backing. They do stick a little bit and remove some of the black paint, very little. I'm able to go through it and touch it up easily. I'm okay with the letters being distressed. Mm -hmm. 
I start fitting the chicken wire to the cardboard backing. This is an easy process. I'm just basically taking the chicken wire and wrapping it around the cardboard backing. I am taking little spots of glue and gluing it here and there to make it secure. I don't like the chicken wire laying over the letters, so I take my wire cutters and cut around them. I cut any excess chicken wire from the back of the cardboard backing. Then I place it into the frame and assemble. Flip it over and I start looking at the honey dipper, trying to decide exactly where I wanna place it. And I decide, so I hot glue it to the bottom corner. And there it is. What do you think? I hope you're enjoying yourself. Take a moment and subscribe. Where my honey bee, take two. Here are the supplies we're gonna need. And these are the tools we'll be using today. I'm using the same frame that I used in the previous project from the Dollar Tree. I'm also taking a piece of chipboard that I have on hand and I'm just tracing out the, the image of the frame onto it and cutting that out. I then um, start looking at my scrapbook paper that I'm gonna use and decide how I wanna lay it out. But first, I'm gonna go in with some white chalk paint folk art and I'm going to give it a light coat as I did in the previous project. And we're gonna let that dry. While the frame is drying, I t take my letters that I cut out with my Cricut using cardstock in yellow and black. What I did is I cut out four yellow letters of each and three letters each of the black. I then took two yellow letters, glued them together with just glue stick. Then I took one black letter and glued it on top of one of the yellow. Then I took two more yellow letters and glued them together and then glued them on top of the black one. So we have the black in the middle, kind of like an Oreo cookie sandwiched. Then I take the remaining two black letters and glue it onto the each side of the yellow letter. So we've got a stack of letters that are all glued together. And I will let you watch one more be made. I will say this is time consuming. Summer days, we dip our feet at the water's edge and everyone would come along to meet us there. A competition to see who can trap follow. If you don't have a Cricut, you can use stickers instead. You can purchase them at the Dollar Tree or any um, craft store. I quickly sand the edges of the chipboard. I take the chipboard backing and trace it onto a piece of scrapbook paper and cut it out. I then take a glue stick and cover the chipboard with glue, and I'm generous with it. I take the piece of scrap paper, scrapbook paper and place it on top of the chipboard and smooth it out. I then cut another piece. Um, I line up the lines so that you can't tell that there's a second piece over the tip, and I glue that down. I then pull out the little metal clasp on the back of the frame and I hot glue the chipboard backing to the back of the frame. I then go in and I start painting my beads black and then I take the chicken wire that I have and I start making body parts for a bee basically. Uh, four legs, an antenna, a stinger, and four wings. And I, all I do is I twist and play around with the wire until I'm happy with the way they look. I 
I use the hole of one of the beads and I stick two wings into each of those holes and underneath it, I'm gonna put two legs into the hole as well. I will do that on both sides of the bead. The bead that I use for the head, I will glue onto the body part and the hole will be at the top and I will stick two pieces of wire and use them for the antenna. And the bead that I use for the back end of the bee, I do the same thing as I did with the head, except for I just stick in one piece of wire for the stinger. I go in and I paint the body of the bumblebee uh, with some yellow acrylic paint from the Dollar Tree, just one stripe on the top and the bottom side. The head of the bumblebee, I decide to paint uh, entirely yellow. And then the back end of the bumblebee, I paint one half of it yellow. And I let that dry. I start laying the letters out onto my sign the way I want them. I then hot glue them down using very little hot glue. Here you can see me finishing the assembly of my bumblebee. I then decide exactly where I want to place my bumblebee onto my sign. I really like the fact that it's all three-dimensional. I then hot glue the bee to the sign. I use the legs to hot glue. Um, one of the things I do use is Gorilla hot glue. It really holds well. And as promised, the Honey Dipper. I take the yellow hot glue sticks that I got from Amazon and I basically take it and cover it on uh, mostly one side with hot glue and I stick some of the wooden bumblebees that I also uh, purchased on Amazon and stuck it to the hot glue uh, before it dried. I then started making a simple bow to place on my sign. I'm using two types of ribbon that I purchased at the Dollar Tree. One is a sheer yellow ribbon. The other is a white ribbon with white polka dots. I'm going to cut them to about 11 inches or so. They will be the same size. I'm doubling them up. I'm going to try to explain how I do this ribbon. So I kind of just crisscross it, pinch it together, 
between my fingers. And then I'm going to take another piece of ribbon. I'm gonna cut a small piece of ribbon and I'm just going to tie it around through the center and make a knot and pull it nice and tight. And then straighten it out. Get it how I like it. Once I'm satisfied with the way the bow looks, I will go ahead and I will trim uh, the tails of the bow. And then I'm going to hot glue it to the tip of our little sign, to the tip of the house. Once I decide where I want my honey dipper, I add a little more hot yellow hot glue to it and another bee or two to it. It looks like a little beehive full of bees hanging from the rooftop of the house. I then cut the handle of the honey dipper so that I can fit it into the roof line of the house. And then I hot glue it in place. I'm going to then hot glue the original cardboard backer onto the back of our sign so that it can stand. And there it is. Hope you like it. Hi everyone, it's Mary with Mary's Kind of Crafty. I wanted to take some time today to introduce myself and say hi. As you know, I've created two signs. Home is where my honey bee. Take one and take two. Here they are. I was curious as to know which one is your favorite. If you would be so kind as to comment below, uh, either take one, take two, or neither, I would really appreciate it. If you're interested to see um, what my favorite is, you'll have to look below in the comments to find out. I think it's time that we get back to crafting. I'll see you in a little bit. Here is my inspiration piece. These are the supplies we're gonna need today. These are the tools that we'll use. I'm using this mason jar I found at the Dollar Tree. I'm also using chicken wire that I purchased on Amazon. I'm unraveling the chicken wire. There's some extra wire that was holding it tight um, that I'm gonna save because I'm gonna use that in this project as well. I'm going to use six inches of the chicken wire for the larger mason jar. I use my my cutting mat to measure it and just cut it straight across with my my wire cutter. I then take the chicken wire and I prepare it to be uh, glued to the mason jar. I'm going to use E6000 along with hot glue. I take the E6000 and sporadically uh, place it on the chicken wire. I then take hot glue and run it down um, the back side of the mason jar. There's actually like a seam in it. Um, I also take hot glue and run it along the edge of the chicken wire and get it in place. And I really press down on it to make sure that it's secure. I roll the mason jar to wrap the chicken wire around it and then measure it out and give it a trim so that it fits around the mason jar neatly. And I'm using my wire cutters just to trim that excess off. I then go around the mason jar and trim the edges 
of the chicken wire uh, so that they're flush with the edge of the mason jar. I use a little hot glue and a popsicle stick to secure the chicken wire around the edges. I then go ahead and hot glue it again along the seam and I use that popsicle stick again to protect my fingers. So goodbye now, baby. You're not this special like the other. Nothing to discover. Just a little fun. Cause I have seen my face more than a million times. Think I know by now that I can be the one. If that is what I want, your days are gone. You have your little I'm weeding out a simple bumblebee outline that I cut out with my Cricut and I'm using that um, to measure how large I need to make that hole on the front of the mason jar and then I go ahead and I clip away some of that chicken wire. There was wire that wrap, was wrapped around the chicken wire that I purchased. I'm using that and I'm just going to wrap it around about three times in a circle and I'm going to use that as a frame for the circle on the front of my mason jar. Once I have my circle shaped the way I want it, I'm going to attach it to the front of the mason jar um, where I cut out, cut away the chicken wire. I'm gonna use a little hot glue just to keep it together. I'll use a small pliers to attach that um, round wire to the chicken wire that is um, been cut. And I just take the chicken wire and bend it around my wire circle. I then go in with my folk art chalk paint in sheepskin and give the entire mason jar a good coat of paint and let it dry completely. As the large mason jar dries, I then cut the chicken wire for the small mason jar. This time we're going to use four inches. Everything is the same except for I'm not going to cut a circle in the front of the small mason jar.
I used my air tool to help dry the mason jars and then I took uh, my paintbrush and just did a little dry brushing to remove any paint that may have built, built up along the chicken wire. I then go in with some yellow twine that I purchased from Amazon and I hot glue that along the bottom. The reason I'm doing this is because the chicken wire does have sharp edges and I just want to be sure that there are no sharp edges poking out. As you can see, I did not let my mason jar dry well enough and some of the paint has chipped in the front, so I'm going to need to touch that up. I then go in with black twine that I purchased on Amazon and I glue around the top edge of the mason jar, same as the bottom, same purpose. You can see me go in and do a quick touch up on the front of the mason jar with a little bit of the chalk paint and then I go ahead and make a quick messy bowl. You just wrap it around your, I'm doing three fingers this time because I want it to be a little larger and you wrap it around several times, cut a piece of twine, wrap it around the middle, tie it, cut the ends, trim them. And then go ahead and glue that messy bow onto the center of the mason jar above the circle that we created on the front. I'm going to take a wood flower that I purchased on Amazon and just glue that in the center of our messy bow. I add a little Mod Podge to the front of my mason jar where I'll be attaching my bumblebee vinyl. While that dries, I start taking jute twine that I purchased at the Dollar Tree and start gluing it along the bottom of the small mason jar. I will do it to the top of that mason jar as well. I make another messy bowl with jute twine. This time I use two fingers versus three, and I do not cut the ends of the bowl. I go ahead and I hot glue the bowl to the front of the small mason jar. And then I take two wood flowers that I purchased on Amazon. If you are interested in any of the Amazon purchases, please comment below and I will send you the link. The wood flowers that I'm using have a small hole in the center. I feed the jute twine through that hole, tie a small knot, and put a little hot glue there to hold it in place. I also put a little hot glue on the back of the flower and attach it to the mason jar to hold it in place so that it's um, facing forward. On the flower petals, I glue on one flower one of the wooden bumblebees and then on the other flower, I glue two. Falling fast, falling fast 
apologize. I did lose the footage of me attaching the Bumblebee uh, vinyl sticker to the front of this mason jar. Now I'm going to add some florals that I purchased at the Dollar Tree to the mason jars. Um, I have a variety here. They're all from the Dollar Tree. I have no rhyme or reason to the way I build my floral arrangement. I just simply add what I think looks nice. Tick tock, the clock is ticking. I don't know what I should do and I wish you would be right here with me. My mind is filled with pictures of when we used to dance but now I don't know where you are I miss you so bad, won't you come back to me? I've got you in my head, you're all that I see I've lost all my chances, I know that I am too late I'm thinking of you I'm thinking of you I'm thinking of you Wondering if you're thinking about me too Now it's too late now it's too late. Here they are now that they're finished. I really love the small one. I think it's so, so cute. And the large mason jar. I think it turned out really nice. Um, it really is a good um, comparison to my inspiration piece. As you can see, I opted to change the florals to sunflowers, and I love the mason jar so much more. Hey, it's me again. Thanks for sticking around. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do so. If you'd like to receive notifications from Mary's Kind of Crafty, click the little bell. Well, that's all I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Until next time. And remember to always start every day off being grateful. Take care. Bye. Here's one final look at all of the wonderful things we created today.